And you, you, you rap by him filler and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Let's not get on to the filler. I, <laughs> I have fucking laughed big time. <laughs> well, uh, we, I'll talk about it in the pod. That's content. <laughs> but we are recording. I thought we started the pod. Oh, we're recording. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't notice that. Cheeky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting you to spilling the beans and just yeah. secretly hit record. Yeah. Yeah. After today's comment on the uh, bad audio WhatsApp group, don't have that bloody sharky on again. <laughs> <laughs> Too good a job, I reckon. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, you it, got it, some uh, very direct feedback. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it might have been that I didn't, he liked it when I didn't talk as much either, but because I felt it was the, the Hover and Kev show with a special guest. <laughs> me. <laughs> you just like to think of yourself as a special guest every week. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, was, that was nice. Yeah. So Hovar's edit tonight, right? Yeah, we discussed that before you came in because uh, we had to do some counting and we counted to three and, yep, it's me. (laughs) (laughs) I thought you were going to say you've taken a vote and it's your turn, Glenn. (laughs) Again. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, every time someone is on holiday, we reset. (laughs) So it's Glenn. (laughs) Uh, just just start doing the whole excuse. But you do it the best. You should do it every time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm just happy I have someone to download and upload the files. I mean, the editing has become uh, easy peasy. Yeah, he enjoys the power. <laughs> <laughs> How was it for you to be not recording an episode? Uh, I was okay with it. It was it was kind of nice, and yeah, I did feel a little bit like I was missing out, but it was still nice to have a break, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> not that, no, 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 not that it's a chore, but it's like when we have a, when we do have a guest on, it's um, it's it's nice, it, it breaks up the episode, but the following week we're all a lot fresher with each other, aren't we? Yeah. It gives us I mean, a it's like your kids. About. Right, it's like your kids. I mean, when they are away for a day at a sleepover, you don't love them any less, but it is really nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you need time to miss them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Simple as that. We missed you, Len. Did we you did. really? Oh yeah. I didn't get that impression at all. It was it was kind of <laughs> it felt I mean, you, like you... more work to have a guest and only be two main hosts. Yeah, I've got to admit, I'd be a little bit worried about um, one of you being missing and having a guest on. That's just, it's just a little bit more pressure, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I mean, the alternative just being two. That would be I worse. Can't, I, I can't really see how the dynamic of that would work because then it's it's not a... I mean, you have a lot of podcasts with two people. It's not that, but I, I don't feel it's it's more like a two way communication now. It's more like a, a group chat feel. So yeah, yeah. I tell you something. Hands off to uh, Rasmus when the guys can't make it on his pod. He records one on his own. Yeah, let's hope we never come to that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because that would be a rambling like three hours probably, or three seconds or three hours. I mean, that's easy. That's just press record and then just talk to yourself for a certain amount of hours and then, yeah. I've come to realize from doing bad audio and leaving voice messages for you guys, I'm actually not capable of talking for longer than one minute at a time without a break. <laughs> you know that you're allowed to breathe while you're talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, well. <gasps> New message. Yeah. <laughs> I never noticed that before, but you do get kind of red in the face when you do long sentences. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always red in the face. I think it's a blood pressure thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Are you going to do an intro this time? I'm going to do it to the, at the end. You should. We could, uh, we could try. Uh, we could try it at the beginning for once. Maybe that works. I mean, to be fair, I think we've already covered all the topics. Just do a outro. 
Yeah. Go Thank straight you, into the half five. Yeah. <laughs> five minute episode. <laughs> yeah. You never know. Tim might uh, message again and say it's the best episode I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he set the bar kind of high there, so it's a hard to. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Go on, intro is in. Never mind. We have to mosey along and do what we do. So, uh, welcome to the number one crude mistakes podcast with KJ from Crude but Efficient, Forward from Behind the Mistakes. And reappearing, Glenn from Number One Projects. Welcome, guys. Hello. Ooh, you survived <laughs> a week in France. Oh, I more than survived. I thrived. KJ, I absolutely thrived. I loved it. It was a very, very beautiful week. Nice. Yeah, the weather was kind. The traveling was okay. A little bit uh, disturbed on the way back. But uh, yeah, no, it was just a really, really nice week. So have you started planning to do... Uh... A video series of Glenn in France, so that could be your, <laughs> be your job. Just traveling around to farms and drinking wine and presenting the countryside and talking about gardens and oh, look at this! And... Hey, that's not a bad idea. Apart from, I don't, I don't like all the places in France. It's like no, but a, I mean, J- James good. May meets Monty Don. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's even better if you hate it. <laughs> and then you drink w- more wine and become more and more aggressive about their, <laughs> how they're cutting their bushes and that sort of thing. This bloody planting arrangement. Stupid! <laughs> that would be wonderful. A we rude put... British guy in France. <laughs> you put I mean, purple it's a... and orange together. <laughs> what? <laughs> and then you end the first uh, series by... Uh, Michelle, I bought a castle. Because that seems to be a maker thing. Buy a castle in France and ruin your economy and your family. And yeah, almost every week, Michelle says to me, "We should buy a chateau in France." <laughs> <laughs> ah, so maybe the shoe is on the other foot, so to say. Yeah. <laughs> Good one, holding it back if, instead. If we sell the houses, get um, get mum to sell her house and pull resources, maybe we could just about afford one. <laughs> look, Glenn! Look, Glenn! They have a huge Victorian-style garden. Yeah, more work. Thank. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Screw that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Show me the size of the workshop if you want to sell it to me. <laughs> What's the budget for the gardener? <laughs> yeah. Would that be a dream for you? Just sitting drinking wine and telling someone else how they how they should mow the lawn and they're doing everything wrong in the garden. That doesn't sound too bad. Sound, <laughs> if you take away the wine, that seems to be like the job I used to do years ago when I was a landscape manager, to be fair. <laughs> But I didn't drink wine then, I promise. <laughs> That's really sad. We In my last work, we, we visited a, a, a very old traditional farm here in Norway. And at some point, they they had a very large garden and they had two full-time gardeners. And that was back in the time when you, I mean, you sublet part of your uh, farm. And then the people who, who borrowed the areas had to work uh, to pay for that arrangement so you had a lot of free working power at your farm and that is also why they could have an upkeep in such large farms and of course now it's a a wife and her husband who inherited the farm and they have <laughs> us- they have regular day jobs and of course they they are hosting events and whatnot just to scrape to go by and they have a i think one of the people they actually have like on payroll is a gardener so they now have one but it's not enough to keep the upkeep with the original garden. So they just right. had to define an area. This is what will keep the rest. It's just going to grow over. And we were just walking around and we, you could see the contours of like a huge garden, almost like outside of a castle, but there's no way they can afford to <laughs> keep two gardeners and full right. staff fixing everything else. So it's just uh, trying to minimizing it and letting the garden go back to being farmland. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, one of the uh, fanciest gardens I worked in for about 13, 14 years was just under an acre. And I used to spend two days a week there. And even at certain times of the year, that would run away from me at that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, you know, that's when you that's when you start getting fancy and there's lots of topiary and things like that in the garden, which require a lot of attention and yeah. Yeah, speciality small, rare plants. A small <laughs> garden can take a lot of time. Well, if it's a lot to do in it, so. yeah, exactly. 
So what did you see in France? Anything noteworthy? Well, we 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 went to Bayo where the Bayo tapestry is, but we went there to see a market, not the tapestry, because we weren't bothered about that. <laughs> so we, that was about the only day out we had away from where we were stopping. The rest of the time, we just spent the whole week in Honfleur, which is just a beautiful town in France. Loads of art galleries, um, cafes, restaurants, and just knickknack shops, basically. It was just just beautiful. I didn't want to go anywhere else. And boats, if we <laughs> concerning all your updates, because it feels like <laughs> half the pictures you sent were uh, from the harbor. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It was, it was the most beautiful place, to be fair, KJ. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was nice. I mean, the, the town was lovely. It was very old. There was we were stopping right next to a 14th century church, mm. which was built by shipwrights which was lovely on a Sunday morning, and they start the bells about 8 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> well, churches for you. Yep. And it's funny, the choir would strike up round about 9 o'clock, and they, the songs sound exactly the same in French. <laughs> 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 yeah, there was a... If you stepped out of our apartments, one door up, there was an art gallery there, which had a huge padlock in the window. <laughs> Which I didn't even oh, spot well. for the first two days, so it's already been done. I'm afraid. Oh, well, yeah. you're a bit late to the job, a bit late to the show. You brought it with you. I mean, was it for sale? What did it cost? I mean, what can I actually charge? This was, this was very gold and shiny. Yeah. Well, yeah. I have bought golden paint, so I mean, that's the oh, easiest fix. Uh, yeah. Was it chocolate inside? <laughs> I didn't check. Oh, <laughs> I'd have probably liked it more if it was. <laughs> It didn't have a bus on the front, though, to be fair. No. Didn't miss that bit art. Yeah, I guess yeah. someone is afraid of copyright infringement. Well, no, well others yeah. don't really care as much. <laughs> a Chinese knockoff. Yeah. I guess, I guess it was for sale. I mean, none of the stuff in the art galleries, galleries was priced. And it certainly wasn't something I was going to inquire about in French. <laughs> I, I mean, in art galleries, if, if it's not priced, it's expensive. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think it, a large padlock would be worth? I mean, I mean you, you, I'm you're building it's, one. It's a thousand pounds in filler alone. So, I mean, it's kind of pricey. <laughs> <laughs> so I've seen pictures of your padlock. I think the whole world has now, actually. Yeah. And it's a uh, current state. Are they, are they screw holes that you're filling? No, I... Because of the shapes, and I didn't want to make wedges to get the clamps on, so I thought I just uh, I wetted the sides, and then I just uh, used uh, small nails and uh, polyurethane glue. And of mm -hmm. course, uh, I have used a, a driver tool or whatever it's called, just to dip them below the surface. Yeah, yeah. And uh, now I put filler on. Um, on the first one, I went a bit overboard because... I got this nice shiny scraping tool, so I thought I could just put on a thick layer and I could just even it out, mm -hmm. just like you do a plaster on a wall. Uh, it did not work as intended, so there is uh, on one of them there is <clears throat> probably on average a three millimeter thick layer of two component polyester filler, which is it's easy to sand, but it's time consuming. So, are you um, sanding by hand? Well, I, I did it on the, the one that I just filled the holes uh, and on the, the, the large one, I'm going to use the orbital sander. Um, yeah. And that's going to be the one that's going to be hanging outside because, uh, I mean, if the finish doesn't get super, uh, I'm going to experiment with it because I want... The original one is in brass and it has like this brushed feeling. So uh, when I start putting paint on, I'm going to have to sand in between the layers in one direction to get that same feeling. And then if it's not 100%, it's okay because then I can just film it from 10, 10 meters away on the bridge. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then I can film the close-ups on a nice one that hangs in my workshop. <laughs> they look really heavy. Are they heavy? Well... It's it, they're not that heavy, but I mean the metal pipe is probably one and a half kilo, and of course I I uh, did some errors on the CNC, so uh, I actually have some extra ribs that I used. I just used every rib that I have, so it's 
I mean, it's close to five kilos, I think, by the time yeah. it's finished. So, so it doesn't feel like something that's made out of uh, foam. I mean, it, it feels sturdy, but of course, not like massive metal because you could yeah. not lift that. So, well, at least not me. How are you going to permanently fix it to the bridge? And have you checked to see if it'll actually go around the railings? Yeah, that that is yeah. <laughs> the, the last problem. Um, and of course the, uh, the the top bar or whatever it's called, it's it's a press fit. You press it on, and it it it's hard to get it out because once you pressed it in, you can't really wiggle it to get it out again. Yeah. So I think just like a smidge of Tech Seven or something in there, and you just jam it in there, and it will never come apart. <laughs> cool. <laughs> And then again, I mean, even even if the press fit, you really have to pull at it to get it out. So the glue is just pro forma because it's gonna it's gonna hang there at for one week at best. I mean, a Saturday night with a lot of drunk people over there, someone is gonna have a swing at it and try to pull it off. So it it won't survive the first uh, Saturday. So <laughs> you're really painting Norwegians in a good light there. Yeah, yeah. It sounds sounds more like here, to be fair. Probably <laughs> hard. <laughs> There are some similarities. I mean, uh, there, there were some people who not swam, but sailed over to the UK. So there might be some similarities in the bloodline. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's also why I'm not not going to put all the hours into the one that I'm going to leave outside. Uh, I could even just do, <laughs> do it nice on the one side, just leave the back. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> I'm going to do it proper, but I'm not going to spend the, the extra 20% on sanding and finishing on that one. I think it's it's usual that you either etch or carve or paint the initials on the people in love on the padlock. Are you going to do something like that? And what letters are you going to choose? Uh, my yeah, wife has been KJ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, crap. Uh, that would have been awesome. No, my wife asked me about that. Uh, well, whose initials are you going to put on it? Are you going to put mine and yours? And uh i'm not sure and i got a look and she just left <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but i mean i'm not sure she, she really is on the fence if she wants to get dragged into the whole uh, youtube universe i mean if i uh, put her name on a padlock and uh, put the video out there and uh, then i put the qr code for my channel on it i mean it's it's very hard to step back from that <laughs> i guess some more followers <laughs> Maybe it's expressing your love to the entire world, so it's. I mean, it's yeah. a nice thing to do. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm not. Re I, I haven't the script for the video yet, but it, it's going to be something around like, I do everything big, even love, and then <laughs> some <laughs> the tacky music and a huge padlock, and like. But it's also like, uh, look at these puny ones, and I, you, I can't really not talk about the ones with the coded lock because how serious are your relationship if you the next weekend can go no oh, screw this and just unlock it no throwing of the keys in the river well, yeah <laughs> have you made a symbolic key as well um i've made a slot for it and i thought about making one but it's going to break off relatively easy but uh yeah, I think the one that's going to hang in my workshop at some point will have a key. Just have something to throw in the water in the video to do it properly. I was just yeah. thinking about the size of it, though. It'd be it's a little bit littering, isn't it? Throwing a big piece of wood or whatever it is in the in the river. Well, I could uh, have my wife stand a uh, hundred yards down the river trying to fish it out with a net. If you make it out of plywood, you're just playing poo sticks. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, you could fish it, fish it out, and say, "Takes you back, this takes you back, this." <laughs> yeah. That's so that's brilliant. You're throwing in the key, and your wife digging for it, trying to get it back. Yeah. What's that symbolism? No, the only thing she does is mutter, "Not on my watch," and then just end the video. <laughs> oh. oh, that's stupid! Love it. Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> Just picking up the key, I'm like, fuck that. <laughs> Just to be safe and put it in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, so, KJ, it. what have you been up to <clears throat> this past week? 
uh, this past week, uh, uh, first I uh, went back to my dying uh, trousers video to see how it was done <laughs> and redid it uh, with a bigger batch. <laughs> I thought you were referring to the amount of views it had got when you were calling it the dying trousers video. <laughs> no, I mean, that's actually performing that's rather done well that, for, yeah? uh, for uh, one of my videos. So, no, it's it's dying as in color, not in uh, death. It's, it's hard. Why can't you have words that are more dissimilar? <laughs> Is it similar in your language? Well, it's uh, dying as in death is de. And um, dying as in clothes is färja. Oh, right, okay, that does sound... But then again, färja is the same as uh, ferry. So, yeah, I guess we have some problems as well. Uh, moving on. Uh, F- farrier farrier is a uh, person that shoots horses in this country. Yes, uh, it is. Uh, <laughs> is that an occupation? Putting shoes on horses. Oh, shoes. That's... <laughs> Not, I thought you say shoot. shoots. <laughs> like, oh, you have people just willingly going around shooting horses? Or, I mean, Cost I have a horse. That, that's called a veterinarian. <laughs> yeah. I was kind of thinking, it's not, like, it's called yeah, the knacker man. My horse <laughs> broke, his, broke his hoof or whatever, and then, yeah, we'll have the, the ferryman come around and shoot him. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> don't pay the ferryman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll get back to your language later, by the way. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, uh, and I also published a video. Finally, yay! Uh, the Rose Cage video. And I, I realized when I started editing, but yeah, it's snow in the first of these <laughs> <laughs> video clips. Yeah, I've been kinda... doing this for a while. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing because that was not from now then. Because I was looking at that and like, oh my god, it's. I mean, winter is coming, but not that fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that was like uh, March, I think I started that or something like that. I, I don't, I don't want to go back and see uh, on the dates on the clips, but yeah, it's well, a been few, a while. Yeah, a few weeks ago, you did say you wanted to finish it this summer because you felt you had to. So at least you've done that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so <laughs> That's far all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a nice video. Are you pleased with it? Yeah, as pleased as I could be. I yeah, think. I'm. I think I think it was nice that you filmed yourself explaining the mistake. Yeah, I felt I thought like that was a nice touch. It feels. I mean, I don't. I don't care much for voiceovers. I feel like if I want to talk, I want to be on camera as well. I think. It's, I mean, it's maybe the narcissist in me uh, I want to be seen all the time. Uh, <laughs> look at me! Look at me! <laughs> yeah, but I mean, looking back on it, it really baffles me that I really I didn't figure out that it would go badly. When I thought, because I was really so, oh yeah I had this idea this should work yeah and I I, I took uh, a couple of hours of work and when I did it but yeah this is nice and it turned out this is crooked as hell how <laughs> how could this have happened well, yeah I love that that's stupid. the best part of the video I mean it's <laughs> it, it's such a beautiful mistake I mean it's not noticing it and doing it and when you're erecting it and then like. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> but you you reacted so nicely as well when you I mean I just smashed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that was a what one of the clips I didn't use was me just throwing it to the ground to see if the weld held but <laughs> Yeah, I just went to town with, with the angle grinder. Uh, that that's really good therapy actually <laughs> cutting something <laughs> apart with an angle grinder. Making sparks is always good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then it came together good, and it's it's worked great for keeping the the rose at bay. So, nice. So far, it's contained, and every nice. time it uh, it throws a vine out, you just tuck it in, and it's it's good again. <laughs> Fantastic. So, have you made anything apart from a video? Uh, I have been making progress on the next video, which is fixing my mistakes. Uh huh. So at the moment I'm working mostly on the power knife, so that's still ah, cool. ongoing. I'm still in the uh, deconstruction part of it because I have to uh, take out some parts to put in new parts. You could do a follow-up video fixing behind the mistakes, which would be a lot more, much more of a complicated process. <laughs> I don't think I am. First of all, you'd have to sew his tubes back together and then you'd get to work on the head. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's more than a ten minute video. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not my my cup of tea. <laughs> Fix your own mistakes. I have enough of them. <laughs> so I got in the workshop since I've been back off holiday as well. Mm, nice. I've started a new project and a bit of filming, which is nice. Even managed to get a short out, which mm. was uh, also nice. So it's all nice. Yeah. <laughs> so let nice, me nice, guess. Nice, nice, nice. Where's the drama? Lathe? <laughs> yeah, lathe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, maybe something a little bit more ex- unexpected on a lathe. I mean, I'm not. I'm, I'm sure it's been done before, but I'm making a, a whole lamp on the lathe. Mm. Nice. What, ki- what kind of... Uh... Just like a, a bedside lamp, if you like. Oh, yeah. Mm, some yeah. kind of wall hanging thingy. No, no, it'll be freestanding, actually. Oh, freestanding on there. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay. yeah. but I just got to thinking, you know, that three components of the lamp are all round and can be made on the lathe, so that's nice. Yeah, Rather it should work. Whenever we've thought about lathe projects before, it's always been, you can make a bowl, you can make a cup, you can, it's all just one thing, isn't it? Oh, yeah, but you can do a, a, sim, a lot of parts yeah. and putting them together in an interesting yeah. way. <laughs> and then it, it doesn't have to fall, follow the same axle as well. Can be. Exactly. <laughs> nice. Good thinking. Good yeah. thinking. And uh, I made the shade for it yesterday, and that's turned out beautifully. I'm really impressed with that. Mm. Some really nice end grain oak on it. It'll be lovely with some Rubio to finish it all off, and it'll be a nice project. Nice, Might nice. even get a few views. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> never know. So, have Michelle touched the lathe so far? No. Uh, yes, she did, actually. After after calling her out on the last episode I was on and saying she's not been on the lathe, she came in and made a little uh, a little cup on it. It was hilarious because um, I came in the workshop with her. And not to, I, I always worry when Michelle gets on tools and that she's, I've got no more experience than her, really, on the lathe or some of the other stuff. I always worry that she's going to hurt herself. So I come in there and say, oh, maybe you should do it like this in two minutes in the workshop I got kicked out <laughs> I, was sitting, I sat in the living room nervously for an hour and she came in with all the fingers and a nicely turned cup so. <laughs> I just see you sitting with the first aid kit ready if something happens yeah, <laughs> yeah but it's, it's always a worry but uh, she's she's always fine and she's you know massively capable so I need to get over that really yeah I mean that that's the problem when you have some experience in a field and you want to give someone else a, a head start so to say and, and and give them some of your experience without trying to to be a backseat driver or what it's called yeah. and, and be too yeah annoying more or less exactly i myself would hate it i don't like being shown yeah. how to do anything i like to figure it out by myself yeah I did watch um, an old video on uh, stuff made here, and in the middle of the video, uh, instead of an ad, he, he just uh, had a show and tell in his first aid cabinet in his workshop, and it's like, <laughs> I should take some notes here. I mean, he had like uh, some military grade for uh, like... Uh, inbound wound and exit wounds some pads and Jesus. stuffings into and if you lose limbs you had the tourniquet <laughs> and then you had some uh, glue that's all right it's basically for animals but i'm guessing in a pinch it would uh, <laughs> work on humans and he had like uh had his wife uh, uh like uh, take a crash course in using some of that if you find me on the floor between my uh, this and that tool then <laughs> Use this and call the ambulance or the hearse, depending on <laughs> the outcome. You know you're expecting the worst when there's a tourniquet in your uh, toolkit, in your first aid kit. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> I mean, we had, as, as a as a rescuer on a rescue vessel, I mean, we have had various coursing. And, of course, uh, we have been shown how to use the tourniquet, but we we don't even carry it in our kit because... You really have to be trained in using it and following it up. And our job is basically to pick people up from the water and get them as fast as possible to a place where you can deliver them to an ambulance. And 
if there's an accident, it's always in the worst weather or worst conditions or something, and you're on a boat, everything is rocking and keeping an eye on a tourniquet and then taking the pressure off at regular intervals, putting it back on again is like, <laughs> we won't be able to do that no. sufficiently. So just <laughs> don't have it. <laughs> a, a tourniquet, that's when you uh, more or less wrap uh, something around like an arm and stop all the the blood flow flowing, isn't it? It's like you see in the movies when I take the belt around the arm and yeah. just uh, squeeze it. But I mean, you really have to twist. And I mean, yeah, yeah it's, I've, it's I've a brutal told tool. On, I've been told on multiple first aid courses that don't do that. Only if someone has lost like a, a hand or something and you want to just do it just uh, above that. Otherwise, you're doing more damage than not if, it, if they haven't lost a limb. Yeah. So yeah, proper training is probably good for that. Ooh, that took a gruesome turn, didn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I only have uh, band aids in my workshop. That's the only. <laughs> yeah, I've only got rags in mine at the moment. <laughs> oh, th th those as well. Those will be good yeah. for heavy bleeding, I guess. Yeah. But a childhood friend of mine, uh, he he was a chef, and they had this uh, chainmail uh, gloves that they use when they are parting meat and so on, mm. because you need to get your uh, one hand in there while you're basically just screwing around with a knife blindly inside the carcass and <laughs> <laughs> that shows a bit more skill to it than that <laughs> yeah well i'm uh that's that's how it looked to me <laughs> but uh that glove that's, that's was probably, was really nice it... i mean it, the, the dexterity was really good on them and they, they weren't too heavy so i mean maybe you should have one of those in the workshop i mean uh when you're doing some really dodgy move of a softened angle grinder or the band saw, it's like Isn't the that metal something gloves. like uh, people who do carvings have for their non-dominant hand, like a, a cutting glove that can take oh, some maybe. some uh, some blade force at least. Yeah, it's the and it's it's kind of tight knit as well. So uh, I mean, if the the knife s slips on you and you poke yourself, you you don't get a lot of uh, penetration. So. Were you worried last week when you had your little operation that the doctor put one of those metal gloves on? Yeah. To, to stub inside you while he blindly poked around with the knife. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought that, well, it sounds cool. I'm not sure how titanium is, but at, at some point I'm going to take like a microwave oven apart because I'm going to make a transformer and some high current or something. And then probably it's like, why is it tingling in my nether regions when I <laughs> pull the switch? So, yeah, maybe not have any metal in your testicles is a good thing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, we all like a little tingle every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> when I'm doing so, certain tasks in the garden, actually, when I'm using um, single-handed shears and things, going off that subject and going back to where we were before. Oh, so you was off the game game subject. Game game. Game. When I'm in the yes. garden, I do certain maneuvers. <laughs> like, I, I, I only use one hand for the tools. I have another hand free. Yeah. And then I... Okay. Oh, moving on. What were you going to say? <laughs> I got horrible, horrible pictures in my head. Please say something. Anything. Oh, cutting grass is so boring. I might smiling? just as well have a wank. <laughs> Saying horrible images and he's smiling away there. <laughs> and I mean, laughing is better than crying. And then maybe you could get, maybe we can get the answer on the long uh, awaited question. When you, I mean, if you for a couple of hours use power tools, you get this uh, vibrating, tingling feeling in your hands when you turn it off. And then <clears throat> would that do anything? <laughs> <laughs> Like, sit, like sitting on your hand beforehand or using your left. That yeah. kind of vibe. That's the stranger, isn't that it's called? Yeah. Auto vibrator in your yeah. hand. Yeah. Oh. I haven't tried it. So I... What were you going to say, Glenn? I, all I was simply going to say is when I'm using the single-handed shears, I generally put just my... Uh, my left hand behind my back so it's out of the way so i can't chop any fingers off accidentally that was all it was just that simple that, I mean, it didn't need any of that other stuff that just happened 
I, I think you need to go, take a pruning course or something. If you, I feel like you like willy nilly cutting right left. If, if you're in oh. risk of cutting what? your hand, you have to put it behind your back. It's not Edward Scissorhands, mate. <laughs> it, it sounded like you were. <laughs> I have to put it as far away as possible from the other hand. Otherwise, it's going <laughs> to lose all its digits. But that is... I mean, when I'm using the hand shears, I, I can really get both my arms in the shrubbery and, and cut and whatnot because, I mean, it's hard to cut your finger manually. But I've seen the, the battery-powered ones and I saw a review... And one of them, it it doesn't have any safety mechanism, at least that one. And it's like, so, so you press the button and it's just like, and then it cuts and it goes all the way before it can unlock and go back again. It's like, so if you have your finger there and you press the button, it's, you're losing a finger. So uh, if I have one of those, I would have left my left hand in the car. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Then you should. <laughs> yeah, okay. That, yeah, fair, fair enough. I mean, if you're using the manual ones, when it start to be painful, you stop pushing, but <laughs> you don't have that feedback to the to the machine. So yeah. <laughs> ah, very good. What should we talk about now? <laughs> uh, I met my biggest and smallest fan just the other the other week. Go on. A seven-year-old boy, friend <laughs> friend of my kids, who started watching my YouTube channel religiously, apparently. <laughs> since I mean, since I, I, I told Facebook about it, uh, uh, his mom uh, saw it and they watched some of the videos, and then he started watching, and and since then he just, I, I want to see a KJ video. <laughs> Fantastic! Is he subscribed? Uh, we told you you've got two friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. He's not old enough to get an account. Oh, yeah. So maybe, hopefully, one of his parents had super subscribed. Um, but yeah, so apparently, <laughs> that's the past. I mean, I, I know about this because uh, they got in touch. Oh, can the kids come over to play? And and who he, he would really like to, to come and see your workshop and see where you're filming. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> so I took him on a little tour in the workshop. And, oh, I saw you make that. I saw you make that. Oh, the axe is heavy. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's yeah, that was, it was kind of weird, but nice. Yeah, but, I mean, he's, cool. he's young. He's probably over it by now, but... Yeah, for a brief on moment, next, moved on to the next fad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but give it a few years and uh, you have a, a new social media platform or something and he might be big and then they ask him well it was his old uh, Flintstone uh, system <laughs> called the YouTube and there was this guy there <laughs> so uh, you might be uh, you might be the spur to something bigger yeah. <laughs> me and Michelle on uh, Saturday on the way back from France got to look around another maker's workshop which was nice hmm? Yeah, we called in on um, Lauren Woods you know when Michelle did the Rubio day Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, the lady running it, Lauren Woods, um, Woods, my thing, um, ran, ran the course and um, won Britain's Best Woodworker 2022, the mm. TV programme. And uh, Michelle's been quite friendly with her and we got invited by while we were coming through Kent, which was mm. nice. So, so we went and had a cup of coffee with her and then had a look around her workshops. Ah, shops <laughs> plural, nice. Yeah, she got two little workshops with a bit of uh, black and green tooling in there as well. Yeah, it was very nice. It was a really nice stop off. Nice little end to the holiday. Yeah. So were you envious of the workshop? I was more envious of a beautiful house and garden, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> she actually works with a sister uh, doing big uh, landscape projects. And um, so, yeah, the garden was beautiful because she still cares about gardening <laughs> in her spare time. <laughs> And the house was lovely, and yeah, no, it was all it was all just a really nice stop off. Yeah, yeah that's good. I think you was... can be envious of someone's workshop and, of course, the tools. But let's say you were going to move in there. I mean, it it if it's a very nice thought through workshop, it's of course a terrible shame to tear it down, but. I don't think I could move into a workshop that someone else has laid out because it wouldn't 
fit the, the workflows, I would probably end up tearing everything down anyway. And I mean, if it's too nice, I would feel really bad about it. So, yeah, I probably would not tear everything down directly. I would move in and then slowly make it my own instead, I think. It was a purely woodworking workshop, so there was no angle grinders in there, KJ. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he would set fire to it first night. So. Yeah. Yeah. You said there were two workshops, so yes, but... yeah, that's true. Yeah, you could have a separate metal one, couldn't you? Yeah, migrate was, all the yeah. boring things. I was a little bit envious of the fact that she'd got a deal on with Pony Jorgensen, I think they're called the clamp and oh, nice, yeah. nice um, MFT table people. Yeah, that's one of the fancy things. Yeah, so I was a bit jealous of those. The clamps are a little bit too big, uh, too big to uh, sneak away among my pockets, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so those are just one of those things that people say a weird name. It's okay, that's some some kind of high end hurdy dirty <laughs> kind of tool, <laughs> and you just have to accept it if you don't know what it is. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I will never get something that nice ever. I at least I wouldn't buy it for myself because I I couldn't use it. And... No. And I'm too cheap to to do it. <laughs> I did take a step up, um, not well, probably about a year ago now, and buy some half decent clamps. I switched to the Irwin clamps as opposed to the really cheap F clamps, which always fail. And that was that was a nice thing to do because I've not had one of the Irwin clamps fail on me at all yet. What well, are those a special kind? Irwin's the brand, but they do they they do the ones I have are the uh, just the single hand operation ones. With the quick release, but they're, they're solid. They've got some really decent clamping pressure, and mm. when you put when you put the big pressure on them, they don't just slip like the uh, really cheap F clamps do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have too much over the cheap ones. I've still got mine. I can't throw them away. I don't no, use them I mean, at all anymore. <laughs> I mean, you can never have enough clamps. That's I think that's one of the laws of physics in the maker world. So <laughs> just. You realize what a big glue up you have if you actually reach for all the bad ones <laughs> in the yeah. bottom of the drawer or <laughs> high up in the rafters or wherever you keep them. I always just come up with a different solution if I run out of my Irwins, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I've also tidied my workshop a bit and I I decided now I'm gonna I'm gonna clear out some of the scrap wood, all those really small pieces that you don't really have any use for. So I just shove them into a box. I'm going to take this to the tip uh, in the next <laughs> week or something like that. And in that week, I think I went back to that box like five or six times to <laughs> dig out some parts. Oh, I can use this for this. I can use this for this. So it was more like I, I did an inventory in remembering what kind of scrap wood I had, it feels like. I did... Almost the same. I have a, a pile of scraps that I'm thinking about uh, well, relocating and then throwing away some of it. And of course, I've used some of the scraps now to make supports for other projects. If you're doing painting or sanding, I can just make something to uh, prop it up with. And then once that is done, I'm, I'm throwing it away. So I have done some clearing out as well, but I still have some cheap goods that I need to relocate and yeah, find a smart location for because then i can actually free up a decent amount of floor space for uh, the guest who arrives in uh, october so the, <laughs> when you the, say it like that the, it for the maker like... maker meetup <laughs> it sounds we like to, your we a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> you did <laughs> yeah. yeah so did i I thought it was weird that the hotel was called Hotel Starvas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was quite expensive, so yeah. <laughs> it said it bring just... your own tools. It's weird, yeah. And he did just buy two new drills as well, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's only the one drill. But it got ah. a, its own battery, uh, the flat kind, so it doesn't tip over. <laughs> flat batteries aren't good for drills. <laughs> as a general rule of thumb yeah. and I've also been taught that you should never have them standing up because then they can fall over it's better to have them lying down yeah but no <laughs> <laughs> it is harder to 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 
to grip them uh, when they're laying down. That's true. So it's it's easier to have them standing up. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I had the the first drill I ever bought in the Bosch uh, battery world um, was uh what is it fifteen point something or fourteen point fifteen volts or something. So. I mean, I can't use the 18 volts batteries. Uh, I can use the charges though, and the batteries are getting really bad. But of course, nobody is buying those anymore. So getting one is just as expensive as getting a a new drill with a new battery. So that's what I did. So um, I'm really happy with the smaller one. It has uh, three times the torque as the big one I have. So um, yeah. It was on sale, so I bought one more. So now I have one for my bits and one for my drill. So, nice. I mean, if you don't care about it, you can go 18 on it, probably. It's just going to spin a little faster until it dies. <laughs> yeah, I, I, tr I tried that, but uh, the the connecting mechanism is uh, not applicable. So you, you can't oh, really okay. get so it to, to work. Oh, they're so. boring. Yeah. So now, now you've got two drills. Tell me you've held them up in the air like two guns and go pew, 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 like a cowboy. <laughs> Yeah, have, you, you. have you checked my Instagram? No, I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I just ordered a pawn show. <laughs> I thought that that would be kind of cool. I, I see people have you have workshop wests, uh, and now you have tool kilts. And I mean, I, I would like to stand out, so I, I'm uh, gonna make myself a tool pawn show. <laughs> so I'm gonna be a dat maker now. <laughs> yeah, don't, I mean, don't forget, a... don't forget the welding tom as well. <laughs> yeah, that's that. I mean, an ammo belt with drill bits in it—that's that could work. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I have to beep, bleep that out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't that good of an idea, but it could look rather fun. That sounds like a KJ project. That does definitely. Uh, it sounds like a bit too much work, so it would take me um, a year or something <laughs> like that. Talking about that, I, I saw a video um, where someone said that uh, some people don't know or they can't make a machine gun noise with their mouth because they, they haven't played uh, Cowboys and Indians when they were <laughs> kids. And I, I saw a lot of versions uh, of people <laughs> trying to make the sound and it was hilarious. And then I thought, all right. Could I make a, a small Gatling gun, but instead of barrels, I use some of the recorders and you just have a, a small air pump blowing into a hole that they pass when they like go around. <laughs> so like that. Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> a then, recorder minigun. <laughs> yeah. And then, I could, and then I could put it vertically and instead of being a gun, I could have a wall mount. So that could be our doorbell because I took the one off when we painted the wall and haven't put it up again. So maybe we should have a a, a Gatling doorbell. Uh... That's wonderful because, I mean, then you have like six or eight notes because you can make them different notes. Oh, I didn't think about melody. that. You can have different <laughs> notes there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so annoying. <laughs> so I love good. it. That's a great idea. Start to sound like the mating call of a tropical bird. That did for a second. Let me just put one on behind me back. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then a randomizer and... and and some people just get the kazoo and say, <laughs> nope, you're not welcome. I actually, on that subject, I have thought about making a contraption with the kazoos as well. But the way they work is that flimsy, thin membrane actually vibrates off of the frequency of uh, the tone it, which you create with your mouth. So yeah. if you just blow air through it, it doesn't do anything. And then it's like, but I want to have a me mechanical kazoo invention, and then how do I make the the vibrations in the airflow just mechanically? And do you have a bellow system, or I mean, you can have airflow, and you can put like one of these uh, mouthpieces that you get for saxophones or something. But that's really fine mechanics to get that to work, and I mean, tuning those are really hard work. So yeah, still on the fence. Yeah. <laughs> 
I have a lot of casus, you know. Um, and, uh, <laughs> this weekend, I uh, uh, my oldest daughter was in the workshop, and I just I did not think. I just so I saw the casus here. Have one of these, and then her little <laughs> sister. I want one too. So we have had. Um, a six-year-old and a four-year-old kazoo player running around in our house the entire weekend. And do I regret it? Very much. <laughs> <laughs> it was easy to keep track of them, I guess. You know, you knew exactly where they were. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I mean, as, as a physics lover, it's really nice because you can hear the Doppler effect uh, like in, in practice. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did sales of paracetamol go up in Norway over the weekend as well? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talking well, of uh, Norway, I gave you one job to do while I was away. Yeah, I delegated to Hovar. Yep. Yeah. And that's uh, come on, Hovar. That means that I didn't do anything wrong here. I mean, you, you don't delegate <laughs> that to me, but uh, yeah, we got a. Uh, a new CMO in the group, the Norwegian maker. So, uh, welcome. A couple of weeks nice in that <laughs> delay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, very much welcome. And how do you prov- how do you pronounce his name? Uh, Rolf. 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 Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, that sounds good it's in spelled, English as well. It's spelled Rolf. Rolf. It's spelled Rolvel, isn't it? Yeah, but it's like Volkswagen. It's uh, the V is the Sounds like an F. Don't ask. I don't know. <laughs> language. <laughs> <laughs> oh, language. Come on. We've, <laughs> we've had a little bit of to in and fro in this week. <laughs> I, I, I don't think we need to talk about KJ's buttery goose, but please explain to me what a bad is and a trap in the house. Oh, yeah. Um <laughs> How should we explain this to the audience? But this is all, I mean, this is all, all a, uh, uh, a video by, what's his name? The Icelandic guy making uh, Nordic countries videos, humoristic ones. on Ulufur or something like that. Yeah, something like that. So there will be, be a link in the description, hopefully, of this video that we uh, were referencing. Uh, so check that out. But yeah, I was talking about the uh, Norwegian <laughs> names and uh, he was making a skit out of the word uh, bad and trap, uh, which is basically a bathroom and stairs. So which is which? Bad. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, what do you I, think? <laughs> I think the bath should be the trap. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, okay, so the, the bath is bad. Yes. Yeah. And then, of and course, uh, in in Norway, you usually have if you have a guest toilet or a downstairs toilet, it's it's just a toilet. It's not a full bathroom, and then it's a half bad. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we have a couple of half bads and a full bad in our house. So yeah, why don't you call it half bad and not just not bad? <laughs> that's not bad. Use yeah, that one. <laughs> not bad. That's, not bad. <laughs> that's just a closet, and you shouldn't go there. Yeah. <laughs> That's I mean, if you really bad. have to, but yeah, bring a bucket. <laughs> so, are there, are, there any, are there any other weird names for your rooms, for parts of your house? Probably, but uh, I mean, like bedroom. I mean, that's natural. It's, gra- <laughs> it's just <laughs> graveyard. It's a, it's a sleeping room. <laughs> So I mean it's it's basically the same, but we don't reference the thing that you're sleeping on, but the activity yeah. that you're doing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Saying like Mostly. That, it could have a different name as well, but yeah, we don't use that officially. <laughs> the shower, dungeon. <laughs> oh yeah, I was trying to figure out I mean, what you call it if you're not calling it a bedroom. <laughs> That's like a shower. That I mean, just saying the word in English would be the douche. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so That's that's not nice. Like no. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so I don't think we should venture any more into this. Uh... Okay, but but I mean, it is good that you're you're trying to learn more of the Scandinavian languages. Um, 
since we're planning to go to Norway together. I don't think I'm trying to understand the Scandi- Scandinavian languages. I'm trying to get a better understanding of you two weirdos. <laughs> and it's just getting worse, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was going to say good luck, but yeah, there is a, probably some. Yeah. Well, let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you liked our chi- our flavor of weirdness. I do. I do indeed. <laughs> it's intriguing. <laughs> <laughs> Color me intrigued. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think we are a, a, a rather interesting uh, blend together of different weirdness. Yeah. Different, but uh, adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> same, same, but different. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So I probably should take this opportunity to thank Kev for standing in for me last week. Oh, yes. Great job. Yeah. Too good a job, some would say. Thank you, Kev. <laughs> that was really nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Good times, as he would say himself. Yeah. yeah. Are you a bit sad this week that you've not got Kev here now? Well, we did have some technical difficulties in the beginning. <laughs> so. Yeah. Felt, felt like home. <laughs> I was uh, in France, obviously following a little bit of the technical difficulties, Pissing my pants. <laughs> Thinking, but, this is brilliant. It's not just me. <laughs> one one thing was having uh, have having him on, but another thing was when I'm doing the quality control, listening to the recording afterwards. I mean, then he's not there to answer back, and it's like there are there are two not dialects but languages that I really can't help myself to try to mimic. And the the one is. <laughs> talking with an indian guy it's very hard because i really want to like because it's the 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 melod melodicity melod, the melodic yeah uh, it's really catchy uh yeah. and it's the same with irish when i when i listen to it i, I just catch myself uh, repeating the things he says trying to mimic it so yeah <laughs> yeah i mean so, the, the southern irish accent's a beautiful accent one of the best yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, I only want to mimic the the ones who sound nice, so it it is really a compliment. But it wouldn't sound like a compliment if I were mimicking what people were saying. So, uh, yeah, no. it's it's tough. It's tough. You can't do it unless you start doing the stereotypical sayings, and then yes, it very much quickly <laughs> turn into. Yeah. So anyway, thank you, Kev. Top of the morning to you. <laughs> 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 Everyone stop talking. Yep. Do you want to try this again and do a little segue into the half time? <laughs> There's your segue for you. <laughs> I was going to ask you about your container, Habar. What's the update? I think the container story uh, is. Uh, I, I, it feels very much half pinty. So uh, <laughs> I think we'll. Uh, Leave it uh, at that. (laughs) For now. (laughs) For now. All right. Good night. Good night. (laughs) What was that? (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't. It's good to get rid of that fly. (laughs) Yeah, apparently. Oh, so that was what it was. I was just like (laughs) flicking on my screen. What is that?